On the SAT, you're going to have to, for some of the questions in the writing section, combine sentences together, either sentences that were previously not connected properly, or as we'll see later, sentences that you combine together that are connected properly, but maybe need to be more uh, clearly connected or more concisely connected. So what I want to do is review what we've talked about so far to show you all the ways you can connect sentences together, uh, or at least a, a good chunk of the ways you can do it. So the first thing you can do is just separate your sentences with a period. So having two independent sentences separated with a period is how most of our writing works, right? Most of the time we don't have one long sentence, we have sentences separated with periods. So for example, I bought the computer, I need it for work, fine. You can use the fanboy's conjunction with a comma, so coordinate it with a conjunction and a comma. So I bought the computer, comma, for I need it for work. So here is our connection between these. You can use a semicolon. I bought the computer, semicolon, I need it for work. No problem. You could, as we just saw previously, transform one independent clause into a subordinate clause or even a phrase, which we haven't talked about quite yet. We will later. Uh, but for example, I bought the computer because I need it for work or changing it into a phrase, needing the computer for work. I bought it, a little bit awkward, but technically is fine. Um, so you can change it into basically instead of having two complete sentences, you have one incomplete sentence and one complete sentence and connect them, connect them that way. And then you can also use a colon. So there is one good reason I bought the computer, colon, I need it for work. I had to change this because it didn't really make sense to just say, I bought the computer, colon, I need it for work. That's a little strange. Point is, you got to have a complete independent sentence right before the colon. And if you do, totally fine. For the purposes of the SAT, shorter, more concise is usually best. Remember this when you're combining sentences. So on the one hand, there's a grammar component to this. On the other hand, there's a uh, style, there's a concision component to this. We want to make sure our sentences are clear, are unburdened by wordiness, and that's a consideration when you're connecting your sentences. Another consideration is the logic. So when you're combining these sentences together, does it make logical sense to combine them by using a particular conjunction or to use a semicolon or to connect them in one way and not the other? So this is more getting into the rhetorical skills half of things, which we're going to talk about more in the second half of the lecture videos. But I do want to bring it up here since when you combine sentences together, you can't really separate the grammatical and the rhetorical component. They're both part and parcel, both together. They both work together to express some thought. So let's look at an example. Which choice most effectively combines the sentences at the underlined portion? So let's look here. Also, studies have found that those students who major in philosophy often do better than students from other majors in both verbal reasoning and analytical writing. These results can be measured by standardized test scores. So in the original, there's nothing grammatically wrong with the way these are put together. They're two separate sentences. That's fine, but separated with a period. There just might be a more artful or more concise way to combine these together rather than saying, you know, studies have found this and then these results can be measured by this. It's a little bit awkward. So let's see what we have as our choices here. How about A? Studies have found that students who major in philosophy do better than students in verbal and analytical writing as measured by standardized test scores. So notice this nicely connects the two sentences by making one basically a, I guess it would be some sort of, well, we won't get into the specifics of what it is, because uh, it's a bit more complicated than what we saw before. But nonetheless, we can use this as measured by standardized test scores to show how these results, which are actually omitted from this, connect to the uh, verbal reasoning and analytical learning that these students are getting, right? You're, you're figuring out that philosophy students are better at these things because they're got higher test scores, right? So these results are measured as or as measured by standardized test scores. So we like A. We'll come back to this though, because maybe we might think that there's another choice that can work. Uh, studies have found that students who major in philosophy do better in verbal reasoning, verbal and analytical writing, and these results can be measured by standardized test scores. Really, this is no different from the original. Really, it's longer. We've connected them into two, into one sentence, but it's really the same issue as the original where there's got to be a more concise, direct way to do it. C, studies have found that those students who major in philosophy do better than students in analytical writing, which can also be measured 
by standardized test scores. That doesn't really make sense. It's not showing the direct connection um, between the results and the measurements that's being done by these standardized tests and then what the philosophy students are doing well. So it's, it's almost like saying it's the secondary thing, like, oh yeah, which they can also be measured by these tests, but it's got to be part of the main sentence. So even though C is technically grammatically correct, it's not logically consistent, or at least it's not clear as to the relationship between these parts of the sentences. Uh, studies have found that students who major in philosophy do better in analytical writing when the results are measured by standardized test scores. Here we've subordinated this uh, part of the sentence to the main sentence by adding a when. Question is, we might think that D sounds pretty good, it may seem pretty logical and seems all right, but this is where we get down to that rule of thumb. If I had to choose between A and D, I would pick A every time because it's shorter. We want to go with the one that's concise, that's clean, that uses the fewest unnecessary words, or uses the fewest necessary words, I guess, and that would lead us to choice A. So it's about grammar, yes, but it's also about style and it's about logic.